everyone, welcome to the 9.17 World of Tanks test server, and today I am going to show you around this new Swedish vehicles quickly. So, first off, if you do want to get in on this test server yourself, then I'll leave a link in the video description. All you have to do is be somebody who has created a regular World of Tanks account within the last month or so, and they can go ahead and download this special client. Uh, so, there is two new lines here in the Swedish tree in World of Tanks. So we have, you can, as you can see, tank destroyer line and a heavy tank line starting as a, a light and then a medium, of course. All the way up to tier 10, so there's two new tier 10s you can get up to. And so, I guess we'll just start at the basic tier 1 and work our way up. We'll start with the, the light, medium, heavy line. And what I've done so far is I've made all these tanks their top configuration, so they all have the top gun, they all have the top engine, top turret, top radio, etc. So then you can get an, a good idea what their specs are on the right side there. Uh, keep in mind I don't necessarily have the best crew in all of them, but just to give you an idea of that and exactly what they're going to look like. And we'll go from there, alright? So, the first thing I noticed when I looked at the tier 1 is it's nothing too special. It's pretty big. It has 14mm armor, nothing too special there. However, it does come with 100% crew. Perhaps you'd like to use that later on. Maybe you could transfer them to different tanks as you progress down the line and have 100% crew available for you. Or maybe you can do what I would do, and that would be, say, take this crew when you get up to tier 6, transfer this crew into the tier 6, and then from there on, transfer that crew to every other tank after that, just so that you can make sure that you have a really good crew whenever you get to the next tank. It's amazing to have 6 cents right off the bat in every tank all the time. Uh, and then if you do find a tank you really like, you can leave your crew in it or do whatever. Anyway, that's just what I do. So the tier 1, nothing too special there. Let's move on to the tier 2. Uh, again, nothing too unique. It has very minimal armor. Uh, your gun choices are there. You can have a, your typical auto loader, Or you can go with this gun, which is what I would probably do. So all these tanks look pretty good. There's definitely some really unique ones in this line. Definitely, I would say, the most unique vehicles in the game. People thought the Japanese tanks were unique when they brought these in because the heavies are absolutely massive, but a lot of these have their own unique playstyle, especially when we get up to the, the tier 8, 9, 10, and we will get into that very soon because there is some new mechanics that are brought into the game just for this tank line. Uh, so the tier 3... We actually have a little bit of armor on this one, 48-50mm armor on the front. And then, they, the new mechanics are absolutely amazing, uh, and they've also gone ahead and reworked how armor ricochets work. So, say for example now, you're shooting at this tank. Regardless of how much armor it has, if you shoot at it at a very high angle, say you're shooting at this little corner piece, regardless of how much armor that has, if you hit that at a high enough angle, your shell will bounce. There was a rule before that if the caliber of your shell was three times the thickness of the armor you were hitting, it would automatically penetrate. So if you had a 150 millimeter shell and you hit armor that was 50 millimeters thick or less, it would penetrate regardless of the angle. Which makes sense. I mean, because in reality, if you hit armor hard enough, it doesn't matter if it would technically penetrate you're probably going to actually break the armor with just the force of the impact. That being said, I am no ballistics expert, but it, it makes sense in my head. Alright, so here we go. The, the Lago. Hopefully I pronounce these things right. Some of these names are ridiculous. Most of them, I'm just going to pronounce the letters because <laughs> that makes sense to me. Uh, and don't mind the white squares on there, that's just on the test server, that's apparently what my clan logo looks like on the test server, just a blank white square. Uh, whatever. Uh, so we're down a little bit of armor, the, the tier 3 actually had more armor than this thing does. Uh, looking at the gun, the top gun only does 75 damage, but it does have a very high rate of fire. So, you're not going to want to trade shot for shot, but if you can get behind your enemy, you might be able to unload several shots into him before he even realizes what's going on. So, there you go. And moving on to the tier 5. This thing has a slightly beefier gun. 150 average damage, 115 millimeters penetration. Again, armor isn't really its thing, but that's okay. If they are rather unique visual models, uh, I would suggest that it's a good rule typically when you're shooting at a tank not to shoot the gun manlet. Typically that's just extra armor put in front of the, the turret. Not always, but most of the time. 
Now it looks like you can hit that, that hatch up there, that's probably quite weak as well. If you are for some reason having a hard time penetrating it, maybe you're a light tank that got thrown into a nasty battle or something. And looking at the tier 6, this thing struck me the first time I look at looked at it. I was like, wait, did my screen resolution just change? Did my whole screen just get squished from the outside in? Because this tank looked too tall and too skinny and it hurt my eyes. So the angle on that front gun mallet is absolutely ridiculous. But there's only 20 millimeters of armor on the front of it, apparently. Uh, I don't think that includes the gun mantlet, but still. Uh, and then the turret is quite big, so you can put some shells into the top hatch again if you are having a hard time penetrating it for some reason. But these high angles and these new mechanics, they might come in handy. They're not quite high enough normally to make a difference there. But if your turret is turned slightly and they hit the side of your turret, you might have a very good chance of it bouncing. And then the frontal angles here are pretty good too. What's the actual, the gun depression angles? Negative 15 degrees of gun depression. This thing is going to be amazing for shooting down at enemies when you're pushed up on a hill. That is amazing. The gun elevation is poor. At only positive 15 degrees, but should be good enough for most situations. So moving on to the tier 7 now. The tier 7 Leo is very comparable to an RU251. So this thing has very comparable speed. Top speed of 60 kilometers per hour. And it has a pretty decent gun as well. It does have a 10 centimeter, 300 alpha damage. I know there's only five rounds per minute, but if you can run in there, get a good shot in, and then run away, which it has the speed and mobility that lets you do that, then you will be okay. And a tier seven, 70 millimeters of armor, on a speedier tank is not too bad. This is a medium tank, keep that in mind. And moving on to the tier 8, the Mil 1. This is when these heavy tanks really are starting to come into play here. And they are kind of neat themselves. So looking at the frontal plate, upper frontal plate of this thing, it is 100 millimeters thick. The turret itself is 180 millimeters th thick, and it is quite well angled. Both of these are very well angled. So we are looking at probably up to an extra 50 millimeters added on top of both of these angles, both of these armor thicknesses. Because of that, of course it doesn't have a whole lot of side armor, it is not an E100 or a mouse, that's for sure. But if you can go haul down on this thing, shooting any kind of weak spot up here, which is almost non-existent on top of the turret, is going to be tough. So if you are top tier in this thing, it might be time for you to rely on your turret armor and hope that the enemy doesn't shoot premium rounds at you. Uh, but 12 degrees of gun depression does have very good gun depression. Make sure you make use of the gun depressions on these tanks. Most of them have very amazing amounts. So make sure you take that into consideration whenever you're fighting your enemies. But also keep in mind you have very poor gun elevation. So you're going to have a terrible time shooting enemies that are above you on top of a cliff. Or if you're on a hill facing downwards trying to shoot up at a hill that's in front of you, you're not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to run down that hill to the bottom or to the top and before you can even get your gun up high enough to shoot at them which is a bit of a disadvantage, but it is what it is. So moving on to the tier eight, or sorry, the tier nine now, we have the same kind of depression elevation. We have actually eight millimeters of gun elevation now, which is absolutely terrible. But when you're on level ground or looking downwards, again, you have, you have 12 millimeters of gun depression this time. We have 100 millimeters of hull armor, which is actually better angled. It's got a pike nose like an IS-3 or an IS-7 and various other tanks like that that do have that uh, to work to your advantage. And this is actually better sloped now. You can see it's kind of sloped outwards as well as back. Whereas if we look at the Emil one again, it was only sl uh, slanted back. But it does have these cheeks that are also quite well angled. I'm not sure how the armor thickness is there compared to up here, but it's probably relatively decent given that it's at the front of a tank and expected to take hits. But this armor looks quite ridiculous, and it is 215 millimeters, probably closer to about 250 plus effective. So as long as you are top tier and you don't have your enemy shooting premium rounds at you, if you can go haul down, and again, these hatches on top are quite well protected behind the turret, then you will probably be able to dominate your opponents. As always, I would recommend you take less hits, than, uh, as few hits as you need to, but when you do need to take those hits, you should be able to quite easily. And we did some testing on a test server. I should, or a training room. I should have recorded it. 
but the side of the turrets on these things, even though they look quite bouncy back here, uh, it's not. So don't rely on it. And then moving on, oh, moving back to the tier 8 again. That gun is so long. I mean, <laughs> you would expect it to have amazing gun accuracy here. Just because its gun reaches halfway to the enemy anyway, so if you miss, it's gonna like, what? How? Alright, so the tier 10 now. The tier 10 looks very similar, just a little more detailed. I love how there's like an unexploded shell sitting there. Maybe that's just a solid hunk of metal, uh, slug kind of shell. I don't know. But that is pretty cool. I've never seen that modeled in before. I've seen many little holes hit by shells being there, but. I've never seen one just stuck in the armor like that, so that's pretty neat. It's very neat. But again, we have the IF-7 style front armor, we have 110 millimeters of armor there, and we have 225 on here, and the turret is laid out much like it is in the tier 9, so I would once again expect that to be something that you could rely on. All right, now we're gonna switch gears, move back to tier two and to the tank destroyers. All right, so a lot of these don't have much armor at all. A lot of them rely on really steep angles. And the tier eight, nine, and 10 actually have some very unique hydropneumatic suspension that allow you to adjust the gun elevation depression with the entirety of the tank by moving the suspension as opposed to just raising and lowering the gun, which is really, really unique. They're the only tanks in the game to have this. So I suggest that you take the moment at the end of the video here when I show you them to actually note how that works so that you don't have it used against you and if you do get to these tanks yourself maybe you can save yourself a little bit of a learning curve then too. So it's here too, 10 millimeters of armor which is quite sad. Uh, tier 2 not necessarily a super special gun, looks like it is a decent amount of alpha damage and you do have a pretty good rate of fire. So. You what you lack for and what you lack in armor you might be able to make up for in the performance of your gun. Uh, and I'm going to you'll be able to see the traverse speed the whole time here. Uh, keep that in mind for tank destroyers. That is very important. If a tank destroyer has a very high traverse speed, then that means that circling it in a medium tank, for example, is going to be quite difficult. Uh, now to put this into to put this into perspective. On the T62A, the tier 10 Russian medium, which has a decent traverse speed, the traverse on it is somewhere around 63. All right, so if it's close to that number, then maybe you should be afraid. And just to compare that quickly, let's hop over to the E25. The E25 is quite hard to circle. It has 52 degrees per second traverse. So. If it gets near that, you are probably not going to want to circle it, or at least think twice before you try to circle kill it. So the tier 3. Alright, so looking at the gun, 110 average damage, 97 penetration, you shouldn't have a hard time hurting anything with this gun. Uh, what was the rounds per minute? 12.5? Okay. 18 millimeters of armor, 150 health points. So you're not going to have the armor in most of these things. Very few of these actually have any armor to, to really speak of. The tier 10 is going to be an exception. We'll, we'll take a closer look at that when we get there. Uh, traverse speed is not too great, but most of these do have, where is it? Where is it? Top speed, 57 kilometers per hour, just above the traverse speed. Most of them are pretty speedy. So maybe if you really want to be daring, you can go on a spotting run. They don't have very great view range because they are tank destroyers, but if you want to be that brave guy and you're stuck at the end of a game with very few guys left in your team, then maybe you might be the best choice. Moving on to the tier 4 now, this gun looks ridiculous. <laughs> it has 50 millimeters of hull armor and 270 health points, but the gun, the big gun on it, the 105 centimeter, which might not be the one you want to choose because it does have a very slow rate of fire, but that's up to you, I would use it. Uh, it does have 350 average damage, that means that you could easily one-shot yourself and have some damage to spare, <laughs> if that matters, which it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, and then 65 millimeters penetration, so not very great penetration. That might be another reason that you might want to move down to one of the 7.5s below, because they do have a, this one does have a much higher penetration value and a better rate of fire. So that all depends on your play style. Uh, once again, you do have 43 kilometer per hour top speed, so you could get out of there pretty quick. You could take a shot and then back into cover, 
or whichever you want to do. Uh, tier 5, again, this gun looks massive. That, <laughs> that thing looks ridiculous. The muzzle brake looks absolutely huge and like looks like a tumor on the end of that gun barrel. That's ridiculous. Uh, this thing, 18 millimeters of hull armor at tier 5, you will probably have lots of high explosive shot at you because high explosive is going to, in most cases, penetrate you. As long as they don't hit your track or your gun, then it is going to penetrate you. Do not rely on it. You have 350 health points and your gun does 300 damage. I would definitely go for the top gun there because the bottom gun looks very similar. Actually, it has more damage and a little bit less penetration, huh? It does have a low rate of fire, though. I would I very hesitantly, I think, go for the, the top 10.5, the 103 right there. Just because of that slightly higher rate of fire. And again, not an amazing traverse speed. So, tier 6. Uh, at first glance, you're going to look at this thing and you're going to be like, this thing looks like... Uh, somebody with its arms wide open, you know, the gun barrel's the nose, it's got two eyes, and these are its, its arms or something. And you're gonna think, also, hey, this looks like a pretty big shot trap. Someone's gonna shoot you here, it's gonna ricochet into here and penetrate. Well, probably not, because it's only 15 millimeters of armor at tier 6. Uh, pretty much anything that hits you is going to, ric uh, sorry, immediately penetrate. But... With the new mechanics, it might actually bounce off if you hit it at like an extremely high angle, say such as this right here where my cursor is. But uh, how often you have to actually worry about that extreme angle happening? That's like a one percent chance of that happening, and then it actually might ricochet and penetrate. It's hard to say with that gun mantle it has, but I would probably avoid shooting at that if possible until you know for sure just how thick it is. It doesn't really tell me here. It's probably not that thick though. Uh, moving on to the tier 7, we're getting closer to those unique vehicles. This almost looks like one. Uh, as you can see, it has the very high amount of, of very high angle of armor there. That is only 15 millimeters again. So holy crap, these things are almost glass cannons in a way. Uh, so high explosive rounds are probably going to be quite effective against most of these. I will probably be firing high explosive at these. I'll have to test exactly how that works out in my own time. Uh, firing high explosive at very high angles, if that has an effect like it used to quite the same either, because all those 15 millimeters of armor, that angle is probably going to put it up, maybe even, maybe even double it, or more, still isn't a, a whole lot though, so, uh, moving on, the gun on this, the guns are now, since we're past tier 5, tier 4, 5, 6, they're going to become a little bit more, I'm going to say normal or average guns. They're going to become a little bit higher rate of fire. They're going to be a pretty standard amount of damage. This is 240 here with a decent penetration. So you're not going to have massive derp guns anymore, but you are going to have some pretty decent rate of fires and pretty decent damage per minutes coming up here. Uh, the tier 8, again, same kind of armor characteristics. Um, the tier 7 had a lot more flat parts to shoot at, not that you really needed it. But that vent looks kind of funny. I'm not sure if I like that. It keeps standing out to me. I don't know. Anyway, uh, once again, 20 millimeters of armor, not much, not that agile either. I'm not sure, th I'm, I'm going to assume that these these numbers are not going to change too much. Uh, there is, of course, some high angles which might come into effect, but this has another unique feature that you will be able to use to make these high angles come into effect. As you can see, if you look at the suspension icon here, you see how there's that special icon on the bottom right corner of it? That is the Hydro Pneumatic Suspension. So, uh, I think I explained this very briefly, but what that's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to raise and lower your suspension so this thing can do a wheelie or a handstand, basically, in order to raise its gun elevation and depression. And that's when these numbers come into effect. When you are not using that suspension, because there is a siege mode and a travel mode, siege mode for using the suspension, travel mode for moving quicker, when you are in your travel mode, you are going to have zero gun elevation and zero gun depression. Your gun is stuck exactly how it is, just like if you were holding a right click and does not have any left to right traverse either without moving your entire hull. So that's going to make it extremely difficult to aim. The only time you're going to want to do that because you're going to feel like an ELC with like way too much, I, I don't know, without a turret. You're going to feel like an ELC with a broken turret. 
the whole time <laughs> you're using this, if not worse. Um, but the only time we're going to want to fire like that is when you're at point blank to an enemy that's right in front of you and you don't have time to switch. So it does take, it shows you here too, it takes about two to three seconds depending on the tank exactly between the 8, 9, and 10, tier 9, 8, and 10, tier 8, 9, and 10, English, uh, <laughs> to switch between siege mode and travel mode. So keep that in mind, you're going to be sitting there for two or three seconds not being able to even fire your gun, let alone traverse your tank or move your gun or anything. Uh, and then you, after you switch to siege mode, you can just zoom into sniper mode and play like normal and you won't even notice the difference at that point. Uh, but that means that at close range, this thing is going to be very limited in its traverse speed. It's going to be very limited in moving forward or backwards, but it's going to be very accurate. So. Just try to avoid, if you're in these tanks, try to avoid combat at close range. Keep everything medium to long range. And if you're sitting inside of a trench, what you might be able to do, or in some kind of hold down position, is use that suspension to adjust the angle of your armor and have only your upper plate showing. You might even be able to hide most of it if you traverse, or sorry, uh, angle just the right way. Which could be amazing, but like the new mechanics are, because they don't have that three caliber rule in the game anymore, that 20 millimeters of armor might be able to bounce, say, a 299 millimeters of penetration Yog Panzer U100 shot if you're extremely lucky, or for some reason unlucky enough to get one of those in your game shooting at you. But if that guy does penetrate you, you have a thousand health points, it's gonna hurt. And then moving on to the tier 9, not a whole lot really changes between the tier 9 and the tier 8. As you can see, the tier 9 is a little bit higher up. Uh, it's camel rating. Where is its camel rating? Concealment. 15 and 23, 15 and 26, so it it has, the, the tier 9 has worse camo, which is to be expected. Usually the lower down vehicles have better camo ratings because, well, they'd be harder to see in grass or something like that, and they have a smaller silhouette in general. Uh, but, but other than that, there's not a whole lot of difference between it and the tier 8. Uh, obviously the gun's going to uh, perform a little bit better and such, and it's probably... Let's look at some of these stats. The traverse is 10 degrees per second better. The top speed is not as good in the tier 9. It's actually 20 kilometers an hour slower. But it does have a much better 17 weight to ton, uh, weight to load limit there. So it, it has, it's gonna be able to perform better. It's gonna accelerate quicker to its top speed. Is what I'm basically trying to say. And then moving on to the tier 10 after this, which is an extremely unique vehicle for several reasons that I'm going to mention that here. This shield at f up front here, this Hesh shield, or, sorry, heat shield, at first you're like, okay, that looks pretty pathetic. I'm just gonna build a shoot shells through it and it doesn't look very thick. M mechanics, and it worked kind of like this in real life too, but mechanics uh, and how the game works, when because this is technically one solid shield. It does, it's not very thick, but it is a shield of spaced armor. And what happens when a shell hits this in World of Tanks, I'm not sure if it's for all shell types, but at least most or some, when a shell hits this spaced armor, what's immediately going to happen is this shell is gonna continue on through it. It's gonna pass through it and it's gonna continue to travel. And it's gonna probably impact, let's say around here. But the farther it travels after it penetrates this spaced armor, less penetration it's going to have. And after the shell penetrates that uh, spaced armor there, say if that spaced armor, I don't know its exact thickness, say if that spaced armor is 20 millimeters thick, for example, your shell isn't going to have just 20 millimeters of penetration removed from it, it's going to have that 20 millimeters plus, I don't know how much more, it's going to have more than that removed from its penetration potential, because not only now has the shell been slowed down, but it is also would have been, in reality, deformed. So it's going to have less penetration value when it hits back over here. Now, we did a lot of experimenting with this. We took a couple E100s and shot at the front of this thing. We took a bunch of different tanks and uh, different gun calibers and shot at it. We took a 215B183, you know, that tier 9 British tank destroyer with 200 and, or sorry, 310 millimeters penetration, armor piercing. We took that, fired at this. And it stopped it quite reliably. We found with the E100 and other guns similar to it, so it is possible. 
Uh, if you shot through the heat shield, then you would, not reliably, but every once in a while, be able to penetrate this and do damage. Right here, and the same on the other side. Uh, also, the gun is vulnerable. You can penetrate that. Your shell can travel through here, strike the gun right about over around there, and still damage it. So, that's a thing. Uh, the lower plate here does have this dozer blade, which does act as extra armor, but it doesn't seem to act as that much extra armor. Uh, so, I would certainly recommend that you shoot at the lower plate. Do not ever, ever, if you have a choice, shoot at this heat shield. You're almost better off just holding your fire and trying to get along beside it. It does have a somewhat decent traverse speed, but if you're in a medium or light, you should be able to, to beat it pretty easily. Uh, that being said, this guy can adjust his, his hydrodynamic suspension just like the other ones can, but Say if you're back here, you might be able to shoot over top of it and hit, and say hit this uh, this hatch, or just anywhere up here because that is in reality up here. Anywhere up here, still only 40 millimeters of armor, so you do have a pretty good chance there. So go ahead, avoid hitting the shield, however you can, and just take the thing out. Track if you need to get around beside it. Uh, we also found that if you basically touch the back of this thing with any kind of tank. It takes damage, and not just ramming damage, but damage like someone is sitting on top of it. Uh, we also found that if you ram the thing, it looks like the shape of the back is probably going to allow this, but if you ram it from the front, then most tanks will go underneath of it, push this thing up, it'll do like some sort of wheelie, point its gun straight up in the air <laughs> because of this, and basically be pushed on its back sideways, or backwards a whole way. And sometimes if you hit it fast enough, you can flip it onto its roof. So ramming these things, if you have any kind of momentum, might actually be a really really good idea especially if he has his his hull angled upwards at the time trying to shoot another target but as long as he's not angled downwards you should be able to complete that you should be able to accomplish that quite well ramming him once might flip him right over and these things where's its weight where is its weight anyway i don't think they weigh too much i'm probably looking right at it Perhaps you guys can see it, and I can't. But anyways, these things probably don't weigh that much, so ramming them in any kind of tank that is slightly heavy, even a little bit heavy, is probably a really good idea. Uh, but there you have it. That's what we have right now. The tech tree for these two lines of tanks. Two lines leading up to tier 10. Looks pretty cool. So what's that? 29 tank? Oh no, uh, sorry, 19 tanks? I can math. Getting quite the collection of nations in this game when I first started playing. I think there was three of them. Russia, uh, Japanese, and America were all that we had in the game when I started playing over five years ago. So that's a pretty cool accomplishment. They have really gone crazy adding in more lines of tanks. And even since then, they have doubled the size of a lot of those tech trees editing and in all kinds of things so that is pretty amazing but anyways guys hopefully this will help you to fight this thing my biggest word of advice when fighting these tanks is shoot them anywhere except for the tier 10 do not shoot this heat shield at the front it doesn't matter if you're firing heat or not do not hit it uh, high explosive rounds say hatch on the 183 will still do several hundred damage when they hit this thing um, so if you have high explosive and you want to fire it at the thing try if you are for some reason absolutely forced to shoot the heat shield shoot it as low as possible because that is the smallest distance between the heat shield and the hull it might only be apcr that actually loses penetration over distance after it penetrates spaced armor but regardless it's probably a good idea to try that so anyways thank you everyone for watching no this is not a hole in the armor underneath the gun i checked uh hopefully some of this will help hopefully this will answer some of your questions and uh I look forward to hopefully having one of these things one day. See you later, guys.